Today I'm going to show you how to track things like this and, well, this. Sound good? You'll have to forgive the continuity, I filmed the intro a couple of days ago. Anyway, what is going on guys? Shooting Dave here, so good to see your faces. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what I'm about, I'm a photographer from London that now lives here in Los Angeles and I make photo and video editing tutorials. So, if that sounds like something of interest to you, then please do consider subscribing. Today we are talking about tracking inside DaVinci Resolve using the Fusion panel. Now, there is a lot to get through, so I have left some timestamps down below, so if you want to skip forward to a certain portion of the video, then feel free to do that. Otherwise, you can just hang out with me and we can go through all of the steps together. First up, we're going to be talking about the first shot that was in my intro. It is often referred to as a locked on tracking shot and it is made famous by the headphone manufacturer Beats. And that is going to be the one that we're going to be focusing on first of all. First off, there are a couple of things that we want to consider for this effect. Now, I actually film in 1080. That's what you guys are seeing right now. Now, for the video that I shot in the intro, I actually shot in 4K, and that way I can punch in without losing any quality. Now, the other tip is that you might want to increase your shutter speed. You see, tracking finds it quite hard to work with motion blur. Now, this is actually a step that I forgot about when filming the intro, but, oh well, you live and you learn. Okay, so tips out of the way, let's get into it. So, drag your 4K clip onto your 1080 timeline and let's begin. Find a spot inside the timeline where you want this effect to start, make a cut there, and find the end, make a cut there. Then simply move your playhead over the clip that you want to use, and then jump into the fusion panel. Now, if you did this step correctly, you should see a media in, and a media out. If you do, that is great news. So what you want to do, first of all, is select your media in node, and then click on it, and then we're gonna go shift and spacebar, and then you're gonna start typing in tracker. This will add a tracking node in between your media in and media out. Now this node will be able creating both the effects discussed in this video. So whatever tips you learn in this step, you can carry them over into your next one. To get good results out of your tracking, what you want to do is look for areas of high contrast. Now, you can use facial features such as your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. However, sometimes that's not enough contrast. So for this one, I actually used the logo on my shirt, which had a lot of contrast and nice sharp edges and was visible all the way through the frame. Now, there are a couple of things inside DaVinci Resolve that you can do to make the tracking a little bit easier. For instance, you can add some extra sharpening in before the tracker, and this way they will be much more contrasty and those pixels will be razor sharp, making the tracker a lot easier. Once you click on the tracker, you're going to be presented with two green boxes. Now, the first one is going to be what you're tracking. So, for instance, in my case, it was the logo on my shirt. Now, the second box is going to be looking for the next frame. So, basically, as it moves, it will look in that distance to see what else it can capture. So, the bigger the box, the bigger the search area. The smaller the box, the smaller the search area. And you want to balance this around a little bit, depending on how fast the subject is moving. In my case, I wasn't really moving that much, so I balanced the box to a reasonable size so it wouldn't be searching too far and it also wouldn't be searching too little. Once you've set all of this up and you're happy, hit track forwards or track backwards if you started at the back of the footage and basically hope for the best. If your tracker failed or didn't stick to the intended subject, you can play with contrast or you can add some more sharpening in. It might take a few attempts until you get a perfect track. Once you're satisfied, you can then delete the brightness and contrast, and you can also delete the sharpening as you don't need those anymore since we've got our tracking sorted. My tracks seem to do a good enough job. However, nothing is really happening right now. Now that's because we need to change the operation to match move, and we need to change the merge node to background only. This will reposition the footage, keeping the subject that you tracked in the center of frame. Now you can play back a few times to make sure that the tracking has done a good enough job and you actually like the effect. If during playback you notice there are a few sudden jerks or anything that you don't like, what you can do is select the tracker, come up to the top, hit your splines, and basically what you want to do is locate the keyframe, and then you can either reposition the tracker or you can actually delete the keyframe all together and this way you can smooth out all of those splines getting the transitions to be nice and smooth and more organic rather than jerking around 
Keep doing this until you've got a nice desirable effect. Now at this stage you're probably wondering why there are gaps around the end of the frame. These do not look good, but if you remember that I actually shot in 4K, we are now going to start scaling up the footage so that it fills the entire frame. Select the tracker node and hit shift and space bar. Now we're going to start typing in transform. What we're going to do is scale up the footage in order to fill out those frames. You might want to scrub through the playhead a couple of times just making sure that your scale is correct and that you scaled it up enough to fill out the edges of frame. Now you can you can also offset your tracker so for instance I tracked the logo on my chest however I wanted my face to be the subject that it was tracking so I used the X and Y transforms to offset the footage and that way it looks like it's stabilized around my head instead and that is it now you appear to have a camera that is following your subject it's a really cool effect just play it back a couple of times making sure you're 100% happy with it if you need to dust your tracking a little bit more please go and do so and if you want to scale up your footage a little bit more or scale it down a little bit more now's the time to do it but basically that is it pretty cool huh okay so what if you wanted to track text onto something well Let's have a look at doing that next. The steps are basically the same as before. Cut your footage down to where you want the effect to start and stop, move your playhead over the clip, and then hit the fusion panel. At this stage, you can add any contrast or sharpening that you need to make your tracking more successful, and then hit run. In my case, I had many more missed keyframes than before, so I had to go in and manually adjust all of those keyframes to make sure that the tracker was doing a good enough job. However, if I had shot at a higher shutter speed, there would have been less motion blur on my hand, and the tracker would have done a better job. I could have also moved my hand much slower through the frame and that would have done the same thing. But you live and you learn. Once you've smoothed out your tracking, select the tracker, hit shift and spacebar. We want text plus, so once you've done that, type in whatever you want and nothing happens. In order to make it appear, what we need to do is change our operation to match move and then our merge to foreground over background. If you want your text to be offset, you can add a transform node after your text plus node and then you can offset it or scale it however you want. If you wanted to add an animation, you can also do this with a second uh, transform node. You just add it in series and then you can make it scale up and scale down or basically whatever you want. Play it back and you're done. You can return to the edit page and now you have some tracked text. So there you have it. I've shown you how to track text to a subject. I've even shown you how to lock on a camera to a subject as well. Now you got some cool tools to go and create some cool shit of your own. And that is all from me guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And as always guys, I've been at Shooting Dave and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.